Welcome, 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 welcome. There's a lot of names. What is going on? Today's stream, we're starting with a talk about Chris Acola plus Q&A. That's how I want to start things up. But will Chris Acola have cola in it? <laughs> That's a good question. I will save answering questions till the end. Maybe I'll read out a few while I'm talking. If we do, can we play Jackbox? I'm going to time you out. I want to go over where we're at with Chris Acola. And by we, I mean me, because I'm still the sole person working on Chris Acola. What the schedule has been like in terms of uh, my workflow on it uh, in the past since the videos come out. And some of the response. And my response to some of the response. You know? It's a big video on my channel, by far. It's kind of a big deal. So, I would argue the first question that has been coming up over and over and over is where is Chris Acola? The video was back in April. Makes sense. Where Where is it? Well, fellas, I mean, if you think about it, it is right here. Chris Acola is still being worked on. It's not done with. I didn't give up on it. I'm still working on it time to time. It's still in progress. But is it my highest priority right now? Probably not. And that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all. Uh, the main reason for this is because I am a human. I have goals, I have priorities. I have a nine to five job, sometimes more than that. Um, so it's just not number one on my list. You're still using advanced map? I am. <laughs> it's so deep, it's so deep, it's so deep. Are you doing this alone? Yes, yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. But I think it needs the time away from me working on it, you know? I think after going two years on it straight, taking a short break, replaying through as much of the game as I can. I've realized, hey, first of all, I gotta write down all the problems with it. Some of those are glitches, and several of the glitches have been solved. You can play the game up until probably the seventh gym and make it through glitchless. It works that far. This is so pretty, congrats, thank you. And that's a good thing. Um, is it perfect? No. If you walk into the wrong house, that could be a soft lock. That could be a glitch that breaks that run for you. Uh, and there are other glitches in there. It doesn't perform perfectly. But it's playable, up through the seventh gym. On top of that, I think there's problems with the story writing. Um... <laughs> shout out to the subscriber. Who is it? Random Thumbvids. That actually sounds like a dope channel. Shout out to Random Thumbvids. What's the starters? I think there's like 35. I was testing it earlier today and I got the options of Fampy, Jigglypuff, and Meryl as one of the three. But you get three depending on the test you take. Besides the fact, I think it needs new, fresh eyes on it. And I think taking time away from it has been really good because I've been able to look back and think about the story and think about the way it flows and, and notice things, right? Notice things that I wasn't thinking about. Because the original way the game was developed was just two years straight. It was, wake up, I knew I had story beats, and I didn't know how to get to those story beats. So I'd kind of make it up as I go. And I think some of that doesn't work. So I need to go back and rewrite a lot of stuff. 35 starter options, only three you get. Yes, I think it's 35, but I have to remember. Would it be worth starting fresh with vanilla fire red and porting everything that works? I don't think so. I think it's too deep. Too deep. That would take more time than it's worth, I think. But that being said, yeah, it's not my highest priority. And that's okay. Doesn't mean it's over. It means it's still being worked on, and I'm gonna get some fresh eyes on it. I'm gonna take time away and time back over and over again and work on it slowly. Not being funny, but ever since I saw your initial video on this project, I've been looking up how far along with it almost every day. Everything looks incredible. You're super talented. Thank you. I appreciate you, random thumb vids. Just saw you subscribe, by the way. Thank you. Let's talk about the marketing on the video and kind of the response. Before that, I do want to mention uh, one update. We have women now. We have female gender represented. Let's go, let's go, female gender represented. We have beta woman sprite, let's go. Beta sprite, two genders is better than just one, let's go. And uh, I, I can show you that uh, this is actually in game. This is on MGBA right now. But at the same time, I wanna talk about the marketing and the response a little bit. The video is called, Game Freak Won't Like This. And the thumbnail says, is this better than Scarlet and Violet? 
And there's a polarizing response to that. Of course, there's a little bit of clickbait to that. Do I know if it's better than Scarlet and Violet? No. You guys are putting a lot of faith into me by reading that in the thumbnail and in the title. And a lot of comments were really, really nice. In fact, probably 90% of the comments, super, super, super nice. Would it taking a bunch of breaks make you lose focus on what your plans were? No, I have it all written. I have everything written out very, very detailed uh, in a gigantic text file. Gigantic with an index in it. <laughs> a lot of really nice comments. In fact, a lot of people weren't just excited about the game or talking about, hey, it looks nice, the OST's nice, but there's a lot of people who felt inspired out of it. Some of you are in the chat. Some of you were inspired to work on your own hacks or work on your own game dev projects or your own sprite things or your own music things. And that's really cool. That's really, really cool. I think that's fucking phenomenal. Um, and that's kind of the response I wanted. Some weren't so nice. You know, uh, and this is a handful. A lot of the mean ones get filtered out by YouTube or blocked by me or uh, deleted by me. And some of these, you know, they're just annoying, right? It's not a big deal. It's a very small minority of people, a very loud minority of people. But, uh, you know, annoying stuff. People complaining about uh, the game's not out. People complaining, uh, use Git, use Pokey Essentials, use Pokey Fire Red the decomp. Uh, give me the game, give me the game, give me the game. And that's fine. But there's also people like Nintendo bootlickers, we'll call it. People who are th uh, threatening me. People who use the N-word. People who hate it. People who sent hate emails to me. That was a thing. People who sent hate DMs to me. I got one death threat over this. And I haven't really talked about it. I've deleted all of those. I don't have screenshots of them. I have like a mini screenshot of one DM. I don't have screenshots of those because I delete it. And I want to make that very clear. I'm not making that up. But that's a real thing that happened. And it's not cool. The reason I bring both of these things up is it's kind of interrupted my workflow from both sides. Of course I'm scared of Nintendo taking this thing down. I didn't expect it to get as much hype as it got. And it also got a little overhyped. Uh, some people were saying these DMCA things because they are genuinely scared about it. They want to play it. That makes sense. Some people are just kind of being asses. Um, that's a real fear. That's a real fear that I get DMCA'd or something bad happens in that sense, and, uh, 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 uh-oh, life's over. But also, the overhype makes me a little scared. People who are assuming it's gonna be this grand thing as if a team was working on it. It's just me. It's just little old me working on this project. I think it looks great. I think it sounds great. I'm pretty proud of the music in it. I think some of the scripts I wrote are pretty cool. But are they all fantastic? Is the game fantastic? I don't know. Uh, that is up to people to decide. And that makes me nervous, right? Um, and yeah, it's not stopping me. The nerves don't stop me. I'm not like a, a nervous and run away and quit kind of guy. But it has slowed me down. I want to make sure that is noted here. Being hyped about it is a good thing. That's a cool thing. That's a very awesome response to it. But it's kind of scary. Um, which I think is a, a natural reaction. Some of the tracks are straight fire. As for the quality of the game, only time will tell. Exactly, and that scares me. That scares me because I didn't expect it to be this hyped. All of that is okay, besides the negative stuff. It's natural. But I want to make sure people are aware of that. I guess I talked about kind of where we are in terms of changes, you know? Uh, glitches are mostly phased up up through the seventh gym. Game-breaking glitches, that is. But there's still a lot of stuff I have to do, right? A lot of changes that I want to go back and make. Uh, stuff that doesn't make sense in the story or doesn't feel great in the story, I want to go back and change. How long has this ROM hack been going for? I've been working on this since 2021? I think start 2021, maybe the end of 2020. I will beat up the people who send you mean comments. <laughs> but it is what it is. I mean, the internet is like that. Um, it's just a real thing affecting the workflow, right? Do you have any custom Pokemon regional variants? No. No, the idea of the game is to keep it as Gen 3 as possible, as compatible to Gen 3 as it can be. But I'm happy to share documentation so people are able to make edits to it later and make changes to it like that. That's fine. I think additionally, a lot of people took the wrong response from the video, right? It, it's kind of to tell a story, right? Not to say there isn't a game, not to say that it, it, it isn't a Pokemon hack and nobody's going to be able to play it or insinuate that of any kind. Don't want to insinuate that. I do want to insinuate 
that the point of the video was a story, right? It's not about, hey, I've got this on the back burner and you're gonna play it tomorrow. I think a lot of people glazed over that fact. Um, it's gonna take a long time. But I am absolutely happy to have an open discussion about it right now. Um, I'm happy to talk and answer questions you guys have in the chat right now. Do you think the game will come out in the next three years? Yeah, absolutely. Three years time, I can say 100%. 100%. Uh, at least a beta or two betas, I would say. And within this year, by the end of 2023, no comment. Don't think so. Don't want to give an absolute ETA because that, uh, that could bite me in the butt. What percent complete would you say you are? Are you adding new features or just polishing, finishing what's already there? <sighs> I don't know what percent. Thinking about like all the changes I want to make before I get a beta out, it's probably like 60, I would say. Um, I would argue that it is polishing and finishing what's already there, but there's still broken stuff, right? It's only up to Jim 7 that it's, it's playable right now. Um, scripts aren't existing for G the 8th gym and beyond that and all the story in between. But stuff's broken. It's it's a full soft lock after the 7th gym. How early is Corsola available? Haven't decided yet. Does it have all Gen 3 Pokemon? Uh, the idea is yes. I don't think in a beta release, yes though. I think it would be uh, in a full release. If you had to pick a date for your ROM hack to be released, I will not say. Holy shit, Dad. What the fuck? That's a huge do You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do that. My days. I'm, I'm going to keep answering questions let TTS read it. That was super nice of you, Dad. You didn't have to do that. Do you think strong Pokemon placement in early routes is important? Like, for example, Ralts and Ruby and Sapphire. Yes, absolutely. My idea is that I want there to be counters that are tricky to find, uh, but have use, right? Like, Ralts would be available early game to beat the Psychic- excuse me, the Poison Gym. It's not a perfect counter, but it's there if you want it. Hey, I appreciate you, Dad. I see your comment there, too. I appreciate you a ton. You do not you know how- You are so talented, dude. I'm very fortunate to have met you. You have such a good head on your shoulders and are one of the most interesting people I've been able to converse with, and I think you have something here that will only get better W. Time. That was really nice of you. Would it be possible to get a demo of just the starter quiz? Yeah, we've done it before. I'm happy to do it today. How did you come up with the name? It was one I threw at the wall, uh, uh, and it sounded like Chris, <laughs> so I stuck with it. It was also a color rock I liked and uh, wasn't taken already by another hack. How difficult was it to create good difficulty and a balance of level curve? I don't think I've got that figured out all the way. I think I'm I'm struggling to figure that out because I've been kind of following the level curve and difficulty of Ruby and Sapphire and trying to find a roughly the same amount of battles and Pokemon included on those trainers in battles. Um, following that curve has helped because um, originally the game was too hard. I made it too hard. I would do tests of it and be able to blast through it, and then I'd do a playthrough of the game, and it would be extremely hard originally. Um, and I didn't want it to be extremely hard. I like it a little more difficult, but not really difficult. Not like a Kaizo game or anything like that. You said all Pokemon are available. How many legendaries have events in the game so far that allow you to catch them, if, en if any? Uh, there's code, and they sit in a random file random folder, like a random map on here. There are events in the game that are built into the game so they look like they're part of the region, but there's also oh. events I couldn't figure out how to include. So there are ways to go into, like Johto in the GBC. You can go fight uh, Raikou, the sprite hasn't been altered yet here. But there are ways to go fight a bunch of different legendaries this way. There's all kinds of different maps. That's a Reggie. That's not supposed to be a Reggie. That's a Mantine. That's a placeholder. But these are all maps from old gens. With a bunch of placeholder sprites. I don't want to spoil too much because that wouldn't be available in the beta. But that's one thing that exists. What do you think about doing some of your challenge runs again in the ROM once it's done? I'm down. I'm down. I'm, I want to be the first to play this. I want the day that the uh, patch comes out, I'm the first playing it on YouTube. Are you thinking about including following Pokemon? No, it, uh, if it was a decomp hack, I would say yes, but it, it's very difficult in binary. Probably not. It would be cool though. Is it multiplayer playable? Um, 
Yeah, technically. I think if you use the code to play Fire Red multiplayer, where people exist together on the same map, I'm pretty sure that works in this ROM. And then in theory, it should work with Link battling and all that stuff too. Link trading. In theory, untested. Can we kiss an NPC in game? No, but you can push, push an old man into a pond. That is very doable. <laughs> has the game been expanded to 32 megabytes? Yes. Yes, it has. Are there any references to other games in the ROM hack? Um, I guess besides for this stuff and perhaps uh, 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 maybe a few scripts that mention other regions. Not really. What trio are the starters? There's no specific trio. Why don't I give you guys a showcase of the starters? We've done this once on stream months ago, but I'm happy to do it again. Oh, look at that. The time changed since I paused it. Do you have a red style trainer that is just big F off extremely good? Uh, nothing post Elite Four yet designed for that, but there are plans. There are plans. And that is a hacked save file. That is why there's 53 minutes, five on the Pokedex, and eight badges. There we go. Women! Women representation! Let's go! Did you change any battling AI? Not, uh... Oh, shit. Sure. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Not in the engine itself. But some of the trainers work differently via AI. This is a beta up here. That just leads to the Battle Frontier, which I was working on. And these are not supposed to be here. And this is going to be changed to an MP3 player. Which is why we have two things in the OST. Two separate albums of music. It goes 8-bit. Every track I made is also an 8-bit. We need to know how old they are. They're killing- they're little kids! They're children! They're children chat! They're children chat! Chill, 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 chill! We go up here, we solve the puzzle. I'm gonna do it fast as lightning because I made the puzzle. Done. <laughs> For the ROM hacks that I love, I usually put them on physical cartridges. This is looking like one I might give that treatment to. Likewise! Uh, absolutely likewise. I have a blue crystal colored cartridge for this exact thing, but I need an RTC piece of hardware, a cartridge that can run RTC for GBA, which is really fucking hard to come by. Uh, then you can take the railway over to here, and this is where the starters can be picked in this town. The early real route is snowy. I like that too. Do I, did I get the town map? I think I get it from my mom. Okay. I really like the idea of coming from a small town away from everything. This is where we just were, and we took a train ride across the entire region to the south where it is sunny and there are palm trees. And I really liked that idea since the first time I made a ROM hack, uh, which never got anywhere. There's the rival, like black and white too, a bit, yeah. Who guides us so that we don't run into anything we're not supposed to before getting a Pokemon. Over to the lab, where this sprite up at the counter, fun fact, doesn't have frames to do the animation it was supposed to, so it just changed sprites. <laughs> Basically, there's two guys here. There is Caden, who uh, name uh, is a placeholder. That was just the first one I thought of. And the professor. And they go, ah, oh, yeah, welcome, 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 welcome. We offered you to do a thing. Uh, so why don't you go over to the right? and talk to this big fuck-off machine. Kaden do be kind of a nice name. Weirdly, uh, just a short time after I made this character, I met a person in real life with the exact same name. If I click A on this machine, I can try to run away, they'll say, No! Where are you going? But if I click A on this machine, it's almost like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, but with no background because I haven't figured out how to do that yet. This is not a custom song. <laughs> Welcome, aspiring trainer. This quiz will ask several questions to understand you as a person and a trainer. A bit corny. Begin now. It's gonna ask you a series of questions. Some you get, some you don't get. It's kind of random. The order is kind of random, except for the last few. And they're kind of like Pokemon Crystal when you're getting the Dratini. It's trying to figure out, are you a good guy or a bad guy? There's a bit of randomness to it. There's always a chance you're gonna end up with Wooper, Mareep, and Houndor. There's always a percent chance that's really small you get Larvitar. On stream, last time we did this, the first time I ever playtested and got it, we got Larvitar. You can end up with Jigglypuff, Fampy, and Meryl. You can end up with any of the starters. 
You can end up with Shuckle, I think, Dunsparce, or Ditto, or something like that. I can't remember. But there's a secret way to do that. There's a lot of starters. Wooper, there's a high chance we're gonna get. Let's say the key is strategy. And this is gonna be random, the way I do this one. You enter a battle tournament. I'm a bit nervous. You can get Shuckle and Larvitar. The best Pokemon have... Duh. High defense. What is your ultimate go? My ultimate go goal is to make friends. <laughs> He's a little nervous. What are Pokemon to you? Servants. How do you view yourself? A bit quirky, I would say. I'm a bit nervous and uh, uh, Pokemon are servants. What raises a Pokemon to its peak performance? Uh, uh, training. Of course. Do you value overcoming difficult trials? I do. That's a question you're always going to get. Strong or weak Pokemon, does the difference matter? You always get this one? Yes. Processing data. Based on the data from this quiz. And a bit of cornball shit. Some Pokemon style shit. Your partner's been determined. So now three Pokeballs appear. Based on the answers I picked, with a little bit of RNG, could always be Marie, Poundor, or Wooper. We'll see what I get. And I got Meryl, Jigglypuff, and Fampy. I think Fampy's the best of the three. But that's the way it works. It is based on a quiz that you take. I should have done a save state so we could run it back. But that's how you do the uh, starters. Is the region slash story based on anything specific? Not really, just kind of what I came up with. The idea, and let me uh, reset the game real quick. I want to go back to the hacked file. The game map region is just uh, trying to contain as much variety as possible. So, if I go to the town map, and this should have the exact same items we had basically. We have a snowy area over here. We have tropical area over here. We have fields and forests over here. We have a desert over here. We have kind of a crag over here and we have a volcano over here. And this is underwater. This is kind of an underwater area and this is a leap fort. This is also loading in the wrong spot. This is post game, which isn't on the map yet. Do you guys want to see the metronome battle event thing? Frontier thing? Let's do it. Welcome to the battle marquee. You talk like Emerald. Yes. You have to save the game in case it breaks or uh, you try to quit. Will PK Hex be compatible with this? It is, but it's weird. Um, I used PK Hex to add these Pokemon. It is compatible, but it thinks it's fire red, so it's very weird. And like, for example, if I put this Fampy into PK Hex, it's gonna say it's broken. It's a broken Fampy because you didn't get it in the right place at the right level. Is this a fan game made by you? Yes, it is the most popular thing on my channel, my ROM hack. So, I, I think I made a short about this around the same week that the video came out, the first video on the channel. The way this challenge works, it's kind of a combination of metronome battles, a classic battling thing people do, and the battle pike. So there's a level of randomness to it. If I step on one of these X buttons and I'll go to the left, those screens up top are gonna randomly populate either a check mark a metronome symbol, that little, this thing, or an X mark. And there's a bit of weight to it. You're more likely to get a check mark than anything else, and you're pretty unlikely to get an X. If you get a check mark, your team gets healed. If you get a regular metronome thing, the door just opens. Um, the door opens when you heal too, but blah blah blah. Nothing happens when you get the check, this thing. If you get an X, one of your Pokemon gets a random status inflicted to it. How come all the route numbers start with seven? I don't know, I just decided 700 would be a good place to start. I like seven. If I go up here, this is where battles are. And it randomly picks a number, one through five. It's weighted, you're most likely to get one because this is really hard. Uh, and that's the number of trainers you have to fight. They all have level 50s, you're locked into level 50s. They all have held items that are great, kind of like Emerald, uh, Battle Frontier. And everything has metronome. All my Pokemon's attacks, there's a Gengar Sprite that's beta were changed to metronome. And this isn't permanent. If uh, I end this challenge, I lose this challenge, or I, I get to the, uh, the, 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 I think it's called a royal in this, a battle kingdom royal. Then the challenge ends and my Pokemon's moves go back to normal and the rest of my team comes back. 
You might have heard this track before on stream. This is the Battle Kingdom battle music. It's different than any other battle music in the game. But if I take this clown on, all he has is metronome. Everything in this battle is metronome. So it's gonna be kind of boring. When the Shuckle loses all its defense. This is amazing the fact you made it when you were 51. <laughs> it's 51. Is there a way to perfect Pokemon's IVs or change a Pokemon's nature? Uh, not yet, but it's open to change because I, I, I made that editable in the game. Um, so if I wanted to add something, I could. In that lab, though, where uh, you saw me get the starter momentarily ago, you can check your Pokemon's IVs and EVs. Like, it'll give you actual numbers for your different stats. The UI goes hard. It is not done, but thank you. Let's go, we got Frenzy Plant, let's go! KO it, please, KO it! Everyone like! Also, a uh, recommendation if you're gonna do metronome battles, use a ghost type. Ghost type is the most effective defensively. Look at this, he can't hit me. He can't hit me. If he self-destructs, I'm fine. If we memento, I'm not fine. Just hit it with a special move! Let's, let's just uh, let's just do this. Let's just let's just fuck around and find out. Did you expect to go viral? Is that with your first YouTube video about a Pokemon ROM hat? No, no, I didn't. Um, it's very surprising and a little scary. Um, I wanted to try marketing it the way I did because I thought maybe the way I marketed it had potential to do really well, but I didn't expect it to do that well, especially with a video of me kind of just talking about it. Um, that was a big surprise. All right. So once you beat all three, there was that sound effect. It's this door opening. This door leads to the next round. This door <laughs> leads to the end of the round. And this door leads to the uh, frontier brain, the royal in this case, kingdom royal. If I go in here, it brings us back to this room and it feels like a loop. If I go to the right, we got a check mark. That's good luck. Our whole team gets healed. Do you see yourself doing more ROM hacking after Chrysocola? Also, I got a potion. I think my bag is empty. I'm pretty sure there's a code that resets my bag. Yeah. Uh, I do want to do more ROM hacking. I do it for videos on the channel all the time. Look at a balding man. There we go. That's fucked up! The Battle Tower! This basically works really similarly to the Emerald one, but it's really simplified because I uh, rebuilt the whole thing from scratch in Fire Red, which was a pain in the ass. <laughs> Put a nerd emoji in the chat. Are all battles random? Yes, to an extent. Uh, yes, they are random. But here's how it works. And not all the doors are animated yet. Do it kind of ignore the doors. That one is. That elevator's a little shorter than I want it. I don't like how she walks the side. She has no walking animation. That door's not animated. But the way the battles work here, this is a really complicated long script that took days to write. There are several instances of random text. Several different text boxes that are picked at random. Several different trainers that are picked at random. And all of their Pokemon are random from a list. There's a list of possible Pokemon they can have. The game picks three of them, sets them to level 50, and they use them. So this time we have a Ninjask. I don't know what else this uh, challenger has. Is it how too many types handles it with trainers being random but not gym leaders? I don't know. But probably not, considering this was made in binary and that one was not. There's probably a better way to do it using uh, whatever they did. Every battle here is random unless I turn the flag off. So there are trainers that can randomly appear at certain battles. Like, you can fight your rival here. Um, but the rival will have a static team every time. Decomp can just do random functions or something. Probably. I wonder what is the best way to make a Pokemon game? Probably through decomp. Probably through a decomp hack. It seems to be the most efficient, the most easy, and uh, the highest quality. And it will still run on hardware, as long as it is under 32 megabytes, unless you have some crazy thing going on. The unfortunate part about this, I can turn off EXP, I can turn off money you get, I can turn off uh, Whiteout if you lose, I can turn on random Pokemon, I can turn on random trainer, but I cannot turn off setter switch. That is determined by what your settings are. And I cannot give them custom movesets because I have no way right now of determining what Pokemon's gonna come out and what moveset that Pokemon should have. 
Based on the way the uh, assembly line works that uh, I, I put into it. You can turn on the rival. <laughs> it's a child. It's a child. I, I made this. I can tell you uh, with, with definite certainty that that's a child. Why did you change Gengar's colors? I just like the look of like the old anime version from Gen 1 and Gen 2. I just felt like it had a different demeanor. We all love this city. May we see a gym? Yeah, absolutely. This one's really complicated in the city. I wanted to jump here because this is our outro music for the channel. What are some of favorite ROM hacks? Right now my favorite's too many types. I'm having so much fun with that. But there's a ton of really good ones. Typically, like, if Doc Breeb's in chat and he is, I'll just defer it to him because he knows more. Doc Breeb is your better person to ask that question. Thoughts on making an up to Gen 3 Pokemon World Tournament like Black 2, White 2's just with characters up to Gen 3. Battles would be cool, but I just want you to remix their battle themes. Hey, if you want to code it, I'd be down to write music. How much did you plan before you started actually scripting the game? I'm currently working on a fan game of my own and I've written a solid 16k words. Start making it! You don't have to have anything. If you have a general idea, just start making. I had barely any ideas for this game when I started it. Oh shit, fuck, this, this gym's blocked because I, I hacked this uh, save file. I'll do a different one. I like this one a lot. Let's do this one. Now, the thing with this gym is you can't see anything. It's like Brawly's gym. Uh, it, it gets expanded as you beat trainers. There is a secret to get it turned on. I can turn the flash on at any point. But there's conveyor belts everywhere. This is a steel type gym, not fighting. This is blocked off. There's nothing over to this side. There's animated lights. Uh, if I go up here... Bada bing bada boom. You're guessing where you have to go. And I think I know the puzzle off the top of my head. I might be able to just sweep the gym leader really fast. Um, I think you have Fire Punch. Who has a beta sprite that I'm not super happy with. I want to change her sprite. This one I did very quick. I think the puzzle is this. And then this. Yeah, there's the puzzle. But if I battle her real quick... I hate her sprite. She's too thin. She's like a noodle. I hacked the OST into the boot ROM of my brain. I don't like the stainless badge. Why did I name it the stainless badge? There's the glitch. And now you can see the gym. These are warp panels. If you went the wrong way, let's say I go this way and the lights are still off and I'm like, oh, it's this way and I go this way. You hit a warp panel, and it's a trainer battle immediately. Secret, though, if you go here and click this while the lights are off, it'll turn the lights back on. Otherwise, battling trainers gets the lights to get bigger. It's the flash to increase. I, this is a hacked save file, so it's going to be a little off. What is it based on? It's not based on anything in specific. Yeah, the villains are... In the story, uh, if you go to this town early, if you try to skip ahead, you get blocked off because this whole place is ramsacked with villains, and they're all beta sprites. So like if I go to the mart, and I talk to this idiot... Ever wanted to get your hands on some gold? Real authentic gold? This is a once in a lifetime deal for $9,000! Uh, he gives you a nugget at full value. Actually, a little cheap. I think it's 10000 if you wanted to get a nugget. I said no. I can't afford it. What's the matter with you? Real gold! Get away from me! That is all you can buy here until uh, you clear the event that gets rid of them. <laughs> Infinite money glitch. You buy nuggets for 9000 and sell them for 4900 Who was the evil team for this? The name I went with at the start was Alpha, and I just kept it because I thought it was kind of funny. Because grunts are alpha betas, <laughs> and uh, admins are alpha sigmas. <laughs> the safari zone is up here. It's probably going to be glitchy because this is the uh, villain version. You can still use it, but it could be glitchy. Yeah, look at the tile set. This is the safari zone, kid. Here to catch some Pokemon. Pay to play is the name of the game. It's ten times the price. I can't afford it. This is a random event. It's a statue of a Meowth that's holding a large coin. When you enter the map, you get like a 1 in 500 or 1,000 chance or something to get a uh, one of three items, I think. 
One of them's a master ball. If you're really lucky, because it's a statue of good luck, you get a master ball. Here's a doozy. How do you juggle a full-time job with streams, uploads, and still finding time to work on these ROM hacks? I sold my firstborn. Quite simply.